Islam portrays Jesus as a horrible, incompetent failure. And once again, every Muslim, no, that's not. We honor Jesus. We show Jesus respect and reverence. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I'm not just talking about you denying his deity. That's not, what I, that's not even what I'm referring to now. Of course, you deny his deity. So regardless of how you portray him, if you portray him as a mere human being, you are massively insulting him. You are blaspheming him. And you ultimately have to stand before him, according to his words, not according to ours. Jesus said he is the final judge. Amen. So I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about your real picture of Jesus. You claim to have this respect for Jesus. You claim to have this special reverence for Jesus as one of God's greatest prophets. And yet, when you dig a little deeper, you find that Islam massively insults him, not just by, not just by denying his deity, uh, but by portraying him as a miserable failure. So let me ask you, Muslims, uh, since you believe that Jesus is this uh, highly exalted figure in Islam, what did Jesus ultimately accomplish according to Islam? Yeah, what did he? Exactly. Nothing. What did he do? Tell me something he did that lasted, that he got done, that made the world a better place. You see, when you think that Jesus is exalted, you're thinking, oh, uh, he was born of a virgin. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great sign. Oh, he, uh, he spoke shortly after birth. Uh, oh, he performed all of these miracles. Oh, Allah took him to heaven and wouldn't allow him to be killed. All of those things, yeah. Um, what did Jesus do that lasted or made a difference? Because according to what Muslims tell me, after Jesus was taken away, his message was corrupted, his followers fell away. They fell away so quickly, we don't even have any record that Jesus had Muslim followers. There's no record anywhere in history. We had to wait till Muhammad to come along and say, oh yeah, he had uh, Muslim followers. You have no record of their existence. Um, so Jesus... After all that work, after being given all these miracles, doesn't get anything done. It was all wasted. It was a big waste. After Jesus, after Jesus is taken away, there are only two kinds of people. There are people who are bowing down to him and worshiping him as Lord. They're going to hell for shirk, according to Islam. And there are people who rejected him. They're going to hell, according to Islam, for rejecting one of God's prophets. So, so at the end of all of Jesus' work, everyone's going to hell. That's one of God's greatest messengers, a guy who doesn't do anything. He chose his followers. They all got corrupted somehow. He didn't do anything that lasted. After all of that, after the most miraculous life ever, nothing lasted. And you're telling me you respect Jesus when that's how you portray him as this incompetent guy who spends all these years doing this and just doesn't get the job done. And so that's why we need Muhammad, because he comes along later, and he gets the job done, right? He gets things done. Jesus couldn't make it work. You see, you don't think, you don't think about these things. You, don't look, you just believe what, you're, what you hear, and, oh, we respect Jesus, and you never think about the actual implications of what you believe. But here, as we've seen over and over again over this five-part series, Islam sounds good in certain ways on the surface, but every time you dig a little deeper, you find either falsehood or you find uh, blasphemy, insults against the one true God.